Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I meant to make this video a bit earlier today, but I got caught up watching the Beyonce performance from Coachella on YouTube, which was amazing. I loved the uh, Egyptian Nefertiti style shout out at the very beginning. It's a great way to prepare myself for the video that I'm going to do today which is the first in like a series that I want to do about women working in archaeology. And originally I wanted to do just kind of like one big video about it, but then when I went to go write the video, there was so much to talk about, I wouldn't have been able to fit everything in and not have anything like probably under an hour. So I thought I would just split it up into a couple different videos for you, sp focusing on some like specific subtopics, as I would call them. And today, for the first one, we're going to be talking about gender diversity in archaeology. I was also inspired to do this by the fact that they just did the whole um, gender disparity and pay thing in the UK, where all companies of a certain size had to release statistics on the pay gap between their male and female employees. So I thought it would be interesting uh, to talk about, especially since this is an interesting topic in archaeology, and it's something that a lot of people who are archaeologists talk about, but outside of archaeology you don't really hear much about. Basically I'm just going to, the way that I'm going to format this is I'm going to talk about the gender ratio of men to women throughout my career slash studying to be an archaeologist. And I just want to stipulate that these are not definitive or calculated numbers, these are just basically kind of like rough estimates, and they're all based upon my own personal experience of working and doing archaeology, so if somebody has experienced something totally different, please comment down below and let me know. I'd like to have a conversation about that. So to start off, we're going to start from back when I was a wee baby archaeologist and studying for my undergraduate at university. Now this might not be the way that most people would expect, but when I did university, the numbers were definitely skewed towards women. There were way more women studying in my program than men. I had more female professors from than men as well. And when I was went on field school, it was like so tilted towards <laughs> women that there were about 40 students, and I would say off the top of my head, there were only like five or six guys on the whole thing. So the rest of us were all women, which is I think probably the opposite of what a lot of people would expect, but is actually quite common in university and archaeological programs. Now when I took a year break between my undergrad and my master's, I ended up working for a Canadian commercial archaeological company. And again, within that, the numbers were a bit more even. I would say it was more of a 50-50 split between women and men, maybe a slight bias towards women. But I think a lot of this is also because the company that I worked for had a lot of ties to my university. So they actually hired a lot of students that did undergrads at my university into their company. But they also hired other people as well, but therefore I think there was a bit more representation of women than you would expect. And of course, when I worked there, we were all expected to do the exact same job and there weren't any allowances really made of like, oh, you can't do that because you're a girl or anything. It was very equal in that way. And obviously, um, pay grade wise, you're paid a lot of the time in archaeology based on experience. If you're very experienced and you're a guy, you will probably get higher pay. But if you're very experienced a woman, you should expect to get the same amount of pay as a guy. And I also did have like female directors. There was a lot of people that worked in the office that were female as well. Women were in high up positions and management positions in the company. Then jump forward to when I did my master's in the UK. And it was a very similar situation to when I was in my undergrad where there were more women enrolled in the program or programs that we all, there was like three of us that all did everything together. Uh, there were more women than men working in it, doing the program, and as, uh, same thing when I went on my very small field school, there were only about seven of us, there were two guys, and the rest of us were girls. And my all my professors, when I was taught my masters, were women. There was one a zoo archaeologist, he was male, but I didn't take any classes from him. So then when I finished my masters, I got into UK commercial archaeology, which was, you know, in so many ways different to what I it was like in Canada, different in terms of the ratios. I would say that it's definitely skewed towards men in terms of the workforce. You do see women working and it is, you know, there will be all, almost always at least one or two girls on every project. It seems like there's really not a lot of women in comparison to what you see in in university. And I'm not quite sure why this is. I think it, it has a lot to do with cultural stuff. You know, it's associated with being quite a physically laborious job, so it, uh, women maybe think that they can't do it, which is not true. And again, it's not something that's really marketed towards women. The other thing 
in UK commercial archaeology, which I can't really comment on in Canadian archaeology because I did it so briefly, is the amount of women that you see in field teams, so people who are going on a way job, you don't see many women doing it who are above a certain age. And I would say that certain age is anywhere from 30 to 35. And this is because at that age, a lot of women tend to have children. Uh, very much so in archaeology, you don't see a lot of women who are younger who have kids. Generally, I would say a lot of women work a lot in their 20s and then in their 30s they start to do the family kind of side of, of things. And that's true to both sexes, but be obviously there is a bias towards it happening to women because when you're pregnant that you have less capacity to be able to do field work and heavy stuff and as well when you have a new baby you need to be in one spot you need to be able to breastfeed them to take care of them and that doesn't go to say that fathers can't do that as well but you definitely there there just is a bias towards women if you reach that certain age and you're interested in having a family a lot of the times what tends to happen is women, women either leave archaeology completely and they find a permanent job doing something else that allows them to be in one city you know seven days a week to be able to go home to their families at night every day or they will try to transition into an office job at an archaeological firm the company that they work for and I would say that all women would probably like to be able to do that but obviously as you get higher up there are less jobs available so not every woman is going to have that option to transfer um, higher up the career ladder into a job that allows them to be at the office and stay at home with a minimum amount of traveling. Now I find this a really interesting thing because in a lot of ways you could say that archaeology needs to change and we need to be more receptive or accommodating for women who want to have or even men who want to have families and who want to like come home to those families every night and they need to be able to do that in order to raise young children but at the same time you can also make the argument that when you became an archaeologist you knew what it would involve and your contract says that you will be required to travel for said job and then you made the decision to chain, make these changes in your life, even though you knew that that would potentially interfere with essentially what was outlined to be your job. And I mean, I would say it would be great if you could have more women having the opportunity to stay in archaeology and still be able to raise a young family. But unfortunately, the way archaeology works with all the travel that you usually need to be doing if you are someone who's very active in the field, it's just really not family friendly. In the office environment, I tend to find, and this is just based upon where I have worked, you have a bit more of an equal balance between the genders, a 50-50 balance, if you will, when you have people working in the office. However, that doesn't apply to all the ranks of the people that can work in an office. So generally, the people that are working in an office at an archaeological company are something called project managers. So they are the people that they design tenders and they kind of like, they manage the entire project, but they don't actually spend a lot of time on site. They'll make site visits, but they're not out in the field every day. And then you also have people that are managers of different departments. And then at the top of companies, you have directors, CEOs, all that kind of stuff. Right now in archaeology, almost all the directors of all the archaeological companies in the UK are men. Not all of them but I would say definitely the vast majority. However, I think this is something that's really a generational thing. And it's something that I can see changing a lot in the next I don't know, 10 to 15 years, as all these directors that are left over from this generation where there had to be, there were a lot more men working in archaeology. Um, when these people start retiring, there's a lot more potential for the women that are at the higher ranks to then come and replace them. As I said before, there tend to be a lot more women working in academia. And I, again, I think that's something that's really tied to the fact that with academia, if you're working at a university, they tend to have better childcare, programs, uh, you know, you might only have to travel to field school once a year, if that. It's just a bit easier to handle having a family when you're set in one place rather than when you're getting sent all over the country. But in general, I would say that archaeology does not overtly discriminate against women in terms of like whether or not they are getting hired based upon the fact that they're a woman or if they're going to be having children anytime soon. 
I would also say that there's definitely in the field teams this kind of this opinion that being a woman really doesn't hold you back and I've met so many people that where we've had these kind of conversations where they say that some of the best diggers they've ever come across are women and generally you find that women in the field either fall into one of two categories they either try and go out of their way to do as much as they can by themselves without asking for help and to be the equal of the men and to be able to do the same amount of work or they sit back and they let guys do it for them. And the girls that sit back and let guys do everything for them don't tend to last very long. And people don't have a good opinion of them because you don't want to be seen as being just relying on others to help you do your work in, in any situation if you're a guy or a girl. So yeah, that's a... That's what I have to say on the particular topic of gender diversity and the ratios of men to women working in archaeology. Other topics that I'd like to include, talk about in this kind of series, are the history of women working in archaeology, because I think there's a lot more going on there than people know about, and as well, harassment and stuff in archaeology, which is a dark topic that nobody really wants to talk about, but it is an issue. And and again, these topics might make some people uncomfortable, but they and they might have different opinions, but I think they're important to talk about because people aren't talking about them and they should be, especially in 2017 when we're having all of these discussions about equality between the sexes, equality in terms of pay, and all that kind of stuff. As per usual, I hope that you guys have enjoyed or learned something new from this video and have found it interesting. If you have any comments or questions for me, please put them down below and please give this video a thumbs up subscribe and press the bell. If you feel like it, you can certainly follow me on my social media accounts, which are listed down below in the description box. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye!